Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Anna, and we're with Ocean Connectors. We're here at the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge for our bird and habitat study field trip. Let's go join the rest of our group. These kids love Ocean Connectors field trips. <laughs> Every year I know they get to go to someplace else. So sixth grade is all about um, coming here to the wetlands in, in Imperial Beach. But um, yeah, they look forward to these field trips. Wetland in Spanish is humedal. Microscopes are great tools that scientists use to make small things much larger for us to see clearly. We may need to adjust the focus. We can do this by grabbing this part of the microscope and sliding it up and down. What items do you think we'll look at today? Since we're outdoors and our microscopes do not use electricity, we can use this little glass tube to help us see some of the slides we'll be looking at. We have so many different things to look at today. First, let's take a look at our microscope worksheet that we're gonna be filling out today. Notice it has sections for plants, slides, a water sample, and a natural object of your choice. Let's take a look at each one. Where should we start? Let's start with our plants. Ice plant is a type of invasive plant. If you look through the microscope, you'll see what looks like bubble wrap on the outside of this plant. These water-filled bubbles show how invasive plants take more water than they need. The next plant we have here is white sage. Notice when you look at it under the microscope, you can see all those fuzzy little hairs. The black sage is here too. Notice how bumpy the skin on the black sage is and how it's much darker. We can also check out the California sunflower underneath our microscope. Notice the hairs and the veins in the leaves. Finally, we have sagebrush. Look at how many little leaves are bundled up close together on this plant. Now let's take a look at our water sample that we got from the Otai River this morning. Can you see any plankton? There are many types of plankton you can find in water samples. Plankton is just microscopic organisms floating in the water. This includes phytoplankton, these are tiny plants, insect larvae, and even fish and invertebrate larvae. Next we see a stingray barb. Look at those small hook-like shapes. Can you imagine that going in you? Ouch, that would hurt. This one is sterilized, so it doesn't have any venom in it, so don't worry. Next up on our worksheet is the slides. These are slides. Let's take a look at the butterfly leg. Far away, it doesn't look like much, but once we get it under the microscope, you can see all the little hairs and even a little toe. Now let's compare that to the honeybee leg. A little bit bigger, isn't it? And you can see it has even a little hook on its toe to help it hold onto the flowers. The next slide we have is a mosquito mouth. Now you know what mosquitoes do. So they have this very long tube sticking out of their face to help them drink blood. You can also look closely and see where the eyes might be. Have you ever seen the wing of a fly up close? Well, now you can. Even though it is almost completely see-through, you can still see the little veins in the wing. Now let's take a look at this bird wing. It's from a little sparrow. 
see how small it is? But we can look closely at each individual feather and even the gross bone sticking out. Now it's important to look at these rocks as well. We have rocks, crystals, and geodes. Geodes look like rocks, but once you crack them open, they have crystals and minerals growing inside them. Now we're gonna look at some shark teeth. Look at how pointy they are to help them catch their prey. And finally over here, we have some barnacles. Barnacles are animals that are alive. They attach onto things like boats or rocks and they reach out with their little feathery arms to eat tiny plankton that's in the water. Next, you're going to check out some of these birds that rely on this habitat for food, water, rest, and shelter to hide in along their migrations. Who remembers what the word migration means? That's right, when animals move from one place to another for food or to have offspring. Migration in Spanish is migración. <laughs> now imagine you're on a long road trip. Will you need bathroom breaks, snacks, water, and a place to rest? The Pacific Flyway is just like an annual road trip for many migratory birds. Many start in the northern parts of North America, like Alaska and Canada. The birds then fly down the states of Washington, Oregon, and us right here in California to the warm areas of Mexico. They need safe places to rest, feed, and hide along their journey. We're going to look at some of these amazing birds passing us by, along with some year-round residents. We're going to use binoculars to do this. This toggle in the middle of the binoculars helps you focus the lens to make it look clear when you are looking through them. Make sure to look through this side, not this side. When we are bird watching, the three most important things to look at to help you identify a bird are its beak, its coloration, and its feet. Here we see some black necked stilts. Their pink legs really stand out. Stilts can be seen around San Diego Bay hunting for small fish and invertebrates along the shore. Oh my gosh, is that an osprey? Osprey are great hunters. These birds of prey dive down at high speeds and grab their prey with their talons. Talons are sharp claws that are on their feet. The osprey will then rearrange their prey, usually fish, so that they are more aerodynamic. Wow, kill deer are one of the most fascinating birds in San Diego. When a predator, like a coyote or maybe a house cat, comes too close to their nest, the kill deer will do what's called a broken wing display. It will pretend it's easy prey with a broken wing and hobble away to lure the predator away from their nest. Once the kill deer thinks the predator is far enough away from its babies, they will drop their act, fix their wing, and fly away to safety. Wow, flying by is the great blue heron. These birds are quite unique in their size and coloration. Notice how they have a similar body shape to a great egret, but a completely different color. Their long legs allow them to wade in the water, and their spear-like beak makes it easy for them to nab a fish.
Oh, this is interesting. There's a snowy egret and a great egret. Look at the similarities. They are both white birds. Both have long necks and legs. Both have a similar body shape. And note the differences as well. The most obvious one is size. The great egret is much larger than the snowy egret. But if you look even closer, you'll notice that the beak and feet color are different on these birds. You may also get to see some terns. There are a few different tern species that migrate and pass us right here in San Diego. Some of the tern species, like the least tern, are endangered. The least terns have nesting sites in San Diego, but they are in trouble. People want to develop on their nesting sites. There's also a lot of dogs and off-leash animals that disturb these nests. And sometimes again, house cats that are let outdoors can kill these endangered birds. Look at how many amazing birds come through this area. Birds migrate along our shores and use wetlands, estuaries, and bays, just like this one, to nest, rest, and feed. That's why it is so important to keep San Diego Bay clean and healthy. Ocean Connectors not only reaches out to local schools to teach about marine science and conservation, but we also run eco-tours, and these tours allow the community to connect with the local environments, and that supports the schoolwork, so it's a win-win for the whole community. What a great day we had today. You really made a difference helping us with our habitat restoration. We hope to see you next time on an Ocean Connectors field trip. Bye! Bye.